special day, a great honor. We came down to see our, a friend of ours, Michael Fagan, the founder and owner of Cripple Creek Spices. So today, uh, he's allowed us to come into his house and show us some of his uh, spices and uh, seasonings. And um, from what I hear, they are the bomb. Um, so today we get to do that, and I'm going to get to cook with uh, with Mike today. Yeah, with the big smoker man. And today <laughs> we are making my favorite, one of the favorite things I like to make on the grill is the steelhead trout, and it's a really, really simple recipe. I like this because it is simple to do. And a lot of things we do, we like to like to do recipes that's easy to do on the road. Um, as you probably noticed, we've been the last couple of videos we've done at home because in the trucking world you get to wait for parts <laughs> and that's what we're doing we're waiting for parts so we figure we do a couple videos so right now uh miss miss melissa if you don't mind uh i'll let mike come in and take yeah. your place today <laughs> and uh, tell, tell everybody a little bit about it what he's about his spices so Michael Fagan, hey, this is Laurel. Good to have you here. <laughs> thank you, thank you guys. Yeah, what we have is just um, Cripple Creek Grilling. Uh, decided to take some of the stuff that I've been using here at home, and you know, and cooking. And everybody says, "Hey, why don't you bottle it?" So I did. The next thing I know, you know, a lot of people are really taking off. And honestly, it's a lot faster uh, when you're when your meal preps and things. You've already got the seasonings together. You just pick out what style that you want to use at that particular you know, meal you're going to do and, and go with it. And so far, I'm going to tell you what, it's, it puts on a couple of pounds to you because you're like, man, that's just so good, i got to go get some seconds. But, uh, that's pretty much what we did, you know, and, and the different things from uh, barbecue pork smokes, and briskets, you know, yeah, I've seen turkeys. Yeah, a lot of you guys on my grilling page, I'm going to tell you, y'all love it. We've got a lot of our uh, Cripple Creek uh, crew members that are kicking off pretty good. Um, you know, awesome. Doing some of that stuff all way up in PA. Got some guys, man, they were, they were smoking for a birthday the other day, and he's like, I'm, I'm about out of rub. So, you know, <laughs> I'm like, hey, give me a call. There's more where that came from. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, there I'm, was also something else you said, too, that I really like about what you're doing is days ever everybody is starting to get mindful of what what's actually in the food that you're making the ingredients the spices everything and um, no preservatives. there are no preservatives no this is straight uh, I make it to order mm -hmm. I make it here in my home um, you know, working on the induction sealers and all those mm -hmm. other things but right now I just wanted to see if this was going to work you know if everybody likes them okay then it's something that you know, I can move forward with on a heavier scale continue to make it if they want to continue to get them. But, um, you know, there's no additives or anything. These are pure spices. Awesome. Everything that's in it, you know, there's no extra things to stop clumping and things like that. So you might get a little, you know, elevated brown sugar or something. You might get a couple of the different rubs. But, uh, you know, this is just great. That's why it doesn't take as much. You know, it might be a smaller bottle. You think, okay, the price is a small bottle, right. but it does not take a lot of You don't of have lot of preservatives that you don't have to use this other brands. Yeah, it's got a lot more bang for the buck on it. Right. So you just like to season your stuff with it, and it's a real robust flavor. All right. Um, so you, you got done. more, what we hear the other day, it's more thrill with, no, with less feel. Uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> you get more spices, yeah. which is great. I think uh, we're all kind of health-minded. But yeah. moving on past that, uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, and I'm going to let you choose. Which spices? Now again, I say I, I start out with a basic recipe, and I, I encourage everybody to uh, start out with something basic, and then start adding from there, and then make right. it your own. Right. So, uh, my normal trout recipe: you use a half a cup of maple syrup. Uh, this here we picked up from Earth Fair. There again. They're going out of business and everything's on sale, so we went and bought, we went and bought a $50 jug of uh, maple syrup. That's the joke. But, uh, yeah. uh, maple syrup, a half a cup, a half a cup of soy sauce. And we're going to try uh, Cripple Creek's. Uh, let him make the choice of what spices to use. So. I, I think we need to go with the Creekside Creole. Because uh, blend the spices in with this on fish. Mm -hmm. uh, and even shrimp. I've tried it on the shrimp on the flat grill. Mm -hmm. It tastes really good. Uh, 
birds, you know, turkeys, things like that. It, it tastes really good with it. Mm -hmm. Or you can put it in your gumbo or you know, anything Cajun spicy. But it's got a little bit of that kick to it, but it's got some of the other herbs in it. So I think a real light coating of uh, our salt, pepper, garlic. It's just an all purpose. Mm -hmm. And now a light coating of this. Nothing real heavy, just make it light because you have your, your uh, mixture you're just going to put on top of it. But I think this will add just a little bit of a kick mm -hmm. in the top with it. It'll soak it into that fish. So I think the Creekside Creole. Same you need to try it out. Creepside Creole. And, and that's the mild version. We've got a hot version. Unless you really, really, really like hot stuff. I don't like hot. <laughs> <laughs> might want to stick to the mild because that's still got a little kick to it. But the hot is really Ooh. cayenne pepper will get you. So, I want to show you the, the fish that we're going to be cooking. No, no. This is a, a steelhead trout. This is a steelhead trout. And it looks. If you notice, this looks like salmon. A little bit of shaking there in the background. Be if you notice, this looks like salmon. It tastes a lot like salmon. And the differences between this and, say, like a sockeye uh, is the trout has more fat in it. And that does that is not bad when it comes to fish because you have that fish fat. And fish fat equals, uh, what's the vitamin? More omega-3, omega <laughs> which is good for you. That's why I love eating Here's salmon. salmon. Yeah. That's uh, why well, I love eating fish, salmon, uh, different recipes of doing that, but this here is the bottom. So what we'll do is, this is what we bought at Walmart. Uh, this is probably the pricier thing that you'll, uh, of a dinner. It is, it's salmon and this trout is not cheap, but it's not super expensive either because it doesn't take much for per serving. So if you look at it that way, it fills you up. And it fills you up. And this is $23 for this piece. I will say this, when you go anywhere and you find steelhead trout, only it's packaged like this, sometimes you can get lucky and get fresh. This is what you want to watch for. When you, we got this at a Walmart, but a neighborhood Walmart. If you go to a regular Walmart, you need to look at the juices that are laying in here. Because this here, the juices look pretty clear, which is, looks healthier. And uh, the different fishes that we bought, it's just something to keep in mind when you go pick out a fish. Um, you want to make sure fish, you got to be really careful uh, not to get contaminants in it. And if the fish sits around too long, it starts to break down. And the juices will start getting a little cloudy. These here, this here looks really, really good. And if it's too cloudy and milky looking, I'm moving on to the next door. I'm not getting it. Uh, is the fish bad? Is it edible? Probably is, but I'm not going to eat it. So we'll get this... Um, We'll get the fish cut up and we'll come back and we'll show you how to put the marinade together. Um, out of the uh, packaging, we got it down here and we got to pat it dry. And I uh, like to pat it dry because whenever you marinate or uh, put spices, rubs, and things like that on it, it seems to help the meat pull the flavor from the spices into it um, being dry. Uh, it's marinade, it'll, it'll moist it up, but I usually like to pat it down and uh, get the excess moisture off of it. So right now we're going to cut the steaks up into call it slivers, <laughs> um, servings. So, and the skin is on the bottom. You want to be careful with handling this to or just pay a little care to it. The skin is on the bottom and it still has scales on it. So you don't want to cut it and then turn the meat over in any way uh, on the board because you'll put scales all over your meat. So you just cut it up in uh, serving portions Real easy, and then you have to get through some of that, some of those scales. It's okay. We did the last video we done was we did the same thing. We, sk we actually skinned that salmon. <laughs> it's actually uh, easier to skin than I thought. Yeah, we'll have some. We'll have some music in the back. I can I can do the soundtrack later. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing the, the, the music that they provide. It's not free for these. Yeah, you get the you get the uh, late night movie feel. <laughs> okay, that is now. Now, Mike, would you suggest uh, uh, spicing this now or? Yeah, I, I would say uh, let's throw some of the salt, pepper, garlic light. Because okay. it's, a, it's a coarse 
Mm -hmm. um, it's a coarse grind and everything, so you would want it light because it's um, you know, that large coarse is on there. Okay. And that, that one's been next to the grill a little bit, so it got a little warm. That's, that's my, per right. my personal bottle. That's all right. Yeah. We'll do a light coating. Yeah, it's kind of a light coating over it. You can see the pepper flakes. And, yeah, perfect. Creekside Creole. Creekside Creole. <clears throat> it flows, doesn't it? It flows. There you go. Nice to take your hands and kind of rub it and pat it in. Yeah. It's like a good pork rub. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Massage it in there. Yeah. So. The last thing that fish will ever appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Rub that in there. We'll let these little sit. We got a little saucepan here for a casserole dish. This is what we're going to put our meat in to, to marinate. And this will need to marinate for uh, at least an hour. Uh, if you want to let it go all night, even better. Uh, but uh, for at least an hour. That there, now we're going to put our uh, seasoning. seasoning. <laughs> I love these gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I want to find me some of these. Uh, the so that way it looks all professional. All right, we're going to set this aside. We're pretty much done with that. Again, this is a really super easy recipe. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take Maple syrup, natural mm -hmm. maple syrup. Well, we got the, uh, we syrup. Got the syrup. Here's that. Pop that loose and I'll go ahead. It's real simple, a half a cup of maple syrup and a half a cup of any soy sauce, your preference. Uh, the cheapest always works for me. Uh, sure. Half a cup of soy sauce. <laughs> and take it all the way up to a cup of the adenine maple syrup. Uh oh, we went a little over. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's uh, my little sweet tooth there. Now, this is a marinade. Normally, on a marinade, you just discard the remains of it. You do not do this. Do that with this. You keep it because we'll make a sauce with it afterwards after it's done marinating. So we're going to take. We got our fish in our, in our dish here. Huh? It's beautiful. That's what I love about rubs. They add a beautiful color to to the uh, to the meat. And I will take a, you got a little fork or something I can... First tour right in front of me. Let me get it. Yeah, for <laughs> Want to keep... Keep my hands dirty. Let's don't contaminate keep my hands everything. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll just give this a little stir. And this is a... I guess you would say this is probably a Asian... Asian yeah. inspired with the soy sauce. But it works wonders. It doesn't take much. It's not a whole lot of ingredients um, for the base of this recipe, but uh, your grill adds a lot of your flavor to it. And everybody knows I love the grill. So, hey there. Triple Creek Grilling likes grilling too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Did it come out? Don't get any out. Did it go out? No, I thought it was. And you just pour it over top of all the meat. And we'll put a cover on this. She'll soak up all the flavors. Kind of push your meat, splash it around there a little bit. You want to get some of the sauce up. Make sure you get that sauce up on top. And all around the meat. I did splash up that time, but that's what they make big cows for. <laughs> and there we go. Sitting that meat just like that right there. It'll soak up all that wonderful juices, and we'll put this in the fridge. And again, we're going to let it sit in there for, for an hour. You can let you go longer. Two hours, probably three hours would be about the max you really want to do. 
If you leave fish marinating, I think, too long, it probably starts to break down. Um, so we'll do that and we'll come back and we'll when we're ready to go on the grill. It's almost been an hour. Uh, fish has been marinating. And so now we're going to start getting our sides ready. So today we're going to have uh, bacon wrapped asparagus and uh, Mike from Cri Cripple Creek has made uh, He's going to make the cauliflower mash. His cauliflower mash, <laughs> which looks great. And uh, But right now we're going to do our uh, asparagus. And I'll let Mike, if he wants to, tell you about how, if he wants to give you <laughs> secrets away about his mash, he can do that. But we're going to have, uh, we got fresh cauliflower here. And he's going to, uh, we'll go through that and then see how to make that. But right now we got our uh, asparagus washed and cut the ends off of it. We're just going to take our bacon and we'll probably grab a couple, about three pieces and it's real simple, just roll it up in there and I, we used to cut them down to about half a piece of bacon but um, we'll go ahead and just do a whole piece per, per wrap, just set them right in there and we'll do, we'll go through our whole pack and uh, get that ready. And we'll come back with, with, uh, in just a minute with the uh, cauliflower mash. Don't they look comfortable? Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, and <laughs> we're going to put a spice on these. Uh, or just something to dust it with. What do you got there? Yeah, we're going to try the blackened steak. I've tried it on bacon before uh, with this. And it just kind of helps crust that bacon up pretty good. Um, I think it adds another dimension and flavors to it. A little kick on the back end, that little cayenne. So I'm just going to try to uh, do a light coating. You don't want a lot of this on here because you want your bacon and your asparagus really to shine through. This is just going to add another dimension to when you bite into it. That's spicy. That's got a nice color. It looks good. <laughs> yeah, it smelled good too. Uh -huh. There you go. And that's about it. And we'll throw those in the oven. We got the oven set on 400. Mm -hmm. And whenever it reaches 400, we'll throw those in the oven and probably will take about half an hour, about 30 minutes in the oven. And those will be ready. And we'll start on the cauliflower mash here in just a second. And now we're gonna start getting our uh, cauliflower mash ready. And I'm letting the uh, master oh, handle yeah. that. <laughs> the mash man. So we've already got, he's already got one of them cut up. Um, Basically, you just pull all the leaves off, and he's going to show you how he done the other one. You still got the core there. So from that point on, where, where do you go to from now? Because believe it or not, there's a lot of people out here that may not know how to do all this. Basically, just pull your leaves back right here, take them and throw them off. And what I do is I like to take my knife and just put it right down there in the back side and just cut around the edges just to try to get that core pulled out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Sometimes it goes a little deeper because that, that core is pretty tough. But you don't want that in, in with your mash. You just take it out like that. Set that over to the side and remove any of the rest of the leaves that you may have. Just set them to your side. Basically all we're going to be doing is putting this in. We've already got a large pot of water. It's starting to boil. We've got a little bit of uh, olive oil in there. A little bit of salt, pepper, garlic. Which is one of our seasonings. Um, and we're going to boil this down to it's soft. Uh, it's just going to render down to a really soft. It's just like making regular potatoes. Um, you just want them soft enough you can start mashing them. Right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is just take and cut this right here in half. Cut that one down again. Cut this one down. All we want to do is just get these pieces of where we can break them off and they're smaller. So they'll start to cook through a little bit faster than, you know, if you got this big old clump in there, it's not going to cook quite as fast as it will. You've got a bunch of these smaller clumps. You keep everything, don't go to yeah. outside of the core that we reduced. Outside of the core, yeah. So because all that's going to be reduced down and mashed, so it's just going to create a little bit more of it. See, something that size, what I'll do is just take my knife, go right down through there, cut it in half. And that way, uh, you know, you still get it cooked a little bit faster through. For any of you drivers out there that, uh, again, we like to do things that maybe you could do out on the road. The fish you can definitely do out on the road. Um, I, I cook on a propane. We're going to be cooking this on a, on a uh, wood uh, grill. And, but if I was to do this out on the road on the propane, uh, uh, when it comes to the fish, I would probably just, if I'm at the store buying my food anyways, I'm going to go back there and I'm going to look and see if I can find the wood planks. Mm -hmm. And we would cook on that. It, it's 
you're not going to get the same effect, but I can still do it and it'll give you a little bit of that uh, wood flavor to go along with. I don't know if you've ever cooked on a wood planks before, but they actually work. They uh, they do render flavor into the fish and it works wonderful. Those cedar planks. Cedar planks. Are the, they're, they're the most popular ones and you can usually get those, I think, uh, food line carries them with yeah. charcoals and stuff now. Right. Nice little slabs of them that you can you can purchase and put them in the truck. The best thing is just a piece of wood. It really does add another dynamic to your, your cooking. When we, we're out on the road, we're uh, in a house now, but out on the road, we'll do, when you're stuck somewhere on the weekend and you ain't got nothing to do, why not? It gives you something to do and gets you out of the truck and gets you doing something. And um, yes, it's a little bit more work, but much more rewarding. But that's our motto. That's what we like to do. If we was out on the road, we would definitely be drumming something up. But every bit of this, uh, the cauliflower out on the road, I would probably buy it in a bag. And like you said, it's the bag, the frozen yeah. the cauliflower works just as good. Works just as good. Now this one, you know, the only best part about this is... <laughs> you snack a little bit while you're getting ready to do it. The only other thing I would do at this point is probably take a little bit of my salt, pepper, garlic. A little, you know, whatever kind of all purpose. Yeah, I'm just sprinkle a little bit on it. And all we're going to do from this point is take this and put it in our pot of boiling water and start boiling it. Well, that's it. So we'll cook those down and we'll get back to you when we're ready to pull these out. And we're just about ready to throw the fish on. So. Be right back. We got them pulled out of the marinade and about ready to go on the grill. And again, I told you that the marinade that the fish is in, we put it over into a saucepan and to make a sauce to put over top of the fish when you when you eat it. So basically, you just I've got everything in here, and then we add uh, probably about a tablespoon of any old horseradish sauce. Yeah, it's already done. Just about a tablespoon. Again, everybody knows me saying I don't measure anything. So we'll put about maybe two tablespoons in there. Now, however, you, however way you want it, uh, however spicy you want it. We'll take that, put it onto the stove, and we'll bring it to a simmer and just basically just let it simmer until the fish is done. So we'll get back to you whenever the fish comes off the grill, or when it goes on the grill. <laughs> we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, we're ready to throw these on the grill. And you don't want to put them right directly over the fire because it'll burn them up and get them cooking a little too quick. Put them on the Brakes are pretty, pretty hot, and we want to sear them. It's going to lock that meat. Uh, seal that meat up so we can flip them. A little bit of black, and then we'll flip them over on the skin. Always start with the skin up, and we'll finish with the skin down. Jalapeno peppers. You always got to have a little something extra on the side. There we go. We'll let those cook on there for about eight minutes. And then we'll flip them and cook them over on the other side in roughly about eight minutes. Okay, we've got our fish off the grill. It kind of happened real quick, like, so we weren't able to catch that on film, but. Uh, Basically, you'll put the flesh side down on the grill and get your grill good and hot uh, because what you want to do is sear that fish on that one side. It'll seal it. It'll stick a little bit, but uh, make sure, um, like Mike did, he uh, treated the grates with olive oil, just like you would non-stick skillet, uh, spray your pan. Keep it from sticking. Keep it from sticking. You want to sear your fish on one side and flip it. And whenever your skin starts to toast, the, the fish is done. You don't want to overcook the fish because it will dry out. Um, so we've got that in here now. The bacon wrapped asparagus is done. And now we're mashing the uh, um, cauliflower. I can't ever remember. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cauliflower, <laughs> the important yeah. Part names. And that's the, the best part about it is basically cauliflower is just kind of bland. I'm just going to take your regular masher in here. Be careful because I do have my... Red copper here, and everybody's like, Oh, stay in the steel, red copper. No, just be real careful, don't scratch your pan. But just mash it up just like you would your potatoes. When your potatoes come out, you know, they're nice and soft. You drain your potatoes out and you put them back in your pan and you just start mashing them up. So that's what it's like mashed potatoes. It's just like the same consistency, except this is going to be cauliflower. So 
The thing about it is you're going to add a little bit more salt, pepper, garlic, a little SBG in there with it, um, just because it's more bland than your standard potato. The potato's got that nice potato taste. So, so I'm just going to get it to a good consistency like that. What I'm going to do next is add me a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic. It's kind of coated pretty good. I'm going to say it's probably two, two teaspoons or two tablespoons right there or such. And that's basically just a taste. Whatever you guys like, that's what you put in it. But the process is just like your, your cream potatoes. So now that I've got that to that consistency, I'm just going to take my heavy whipping cream. And I'm just going to add a little bit because I don't want them too runny. Or about a quarter of a cup. Yeah, I'm gonna say about, I'm about like you. I don't really care. <laughs> that, that was eyeballed like crazy, wasn't it? I was looking at it. I'm yeah. like, yeah, about a quarter. I don't yeah, about a quarter cup, or something like that. We don't like to measure. <laughs> yeah, but the best part is, is try try doing it a little bit at a time, and then if you need a little more, they're still a little thick, and you don't like it, then add a little bit more to uh, to get it to the consistency. But see, this consistency right there, I'm, you know, that that's not bad. It's not sticking to it, but. You know, after a couple of minutes when this stuff starts to cool down a little bit, it's uh, it's going to thicken. Not to mention, I like to add an Italian or Parmesan cheese to mine. So I did get that out. Give me one second. I'm going to throw this uh, this Italian blend, just a five blend Italian cheese food line. This is a whole eight ounce thing. I'll probably use a couple of ounces out of it. I'm going to say I'm going to use about a half a bag. Give it some added flavor, and it'll also give it that more creaminess. Hey, this is I know. Hmm, it's not not bad. The main thing to be careful is when you add too much of that heavy cream, yeah. and it gets soupy. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well go ahead and start <laughs> start cooking up some more cauliflower to add to it because yeah, it's a little too late on that one. Without, you know, especially the keto side, you don't want to add flour or cornstarch to thicken it. Yeah. You know, you have to do it naturally. It's easier to add than to take away. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> so now I just go back and start mashing it again with that, uh, that Italian in there. And what I've got over here is about two tablespoons of just oregano. Regular old oregano. I'm just going to add that into it. It's going to give us a, a little bit better flavor with that Italian seasoning. And it's also... It's going to give us a little bit of greenery to kind of make it look like it's got a little bit more of a robust flavor and it's going to add to it. I'm going to like it. This one right here, we may end up adding, just with the uh, stringy consistency, we're going to add a little bit more of our whipping cream because it looks more like string cheese. Mm. You want to get a little bit away from that. And I'm going to say that's probably two tablespoons mm -hmm. addition. So. <laughs> Somewhere around out, another little dab of you. <laughs> Just adding a little dab in there. That's the whole fun about about work, uh, cooking in the kitchen and cooking on your own. Is you just kind of learn as you go. And sometimes yeah. you you know you'll read it. How many times have you read a recipe and done it exactly the way they done it, but for some reason it, it doesn't just didn't turn, turn out, out the way it should have? Good. It is. It's gonna be a little <laughs> bit more salt. Pepper garlic. But I'm gonna tell you that oregano pops into that pretty good. Now it's just getting a little bit more salt for that that cauliflower. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like you know your turnip greens or your squashes and yeah. zucchinis. You gotta have you know quite a bit of that salt, pepper, garlic in there to really pull their natural flavors out. But I think that one right there is gonna do it. Brother Trey, you wanna grab that spoon right there and get you a little sample in there. <laughs> tell me what you think. Those are good. That's good. <laughs> Bam. good. That's good. All yeah. right. So it's simple. It's easy mash. Get a couple good. little small ingredients yeah. that you pull around, and you can go crazy with it. Throw some broccoli in there. It adds a little greenish color to it, mm -hmm. but it gives a little bit more flavor when you do the cauliflower and broccoli combinations. So. How much healthier is this than well, the mashed the, potatoes? The starches in them potatoes, man. They'll, right. They're huge. Right now, you're looking at a little of nothing. I think this has like one gram. I wouldn't use but a quarter cup. Right. So I'm gonna say maybe four to five grams total, but that's for a pot. Right. right. You know, this is five, six, eating. maybe seven servings, mm -hmm. you know, right. of uh, of this mash. So one you're looking at maybe a gram or two of carbohydrates. Very keto friendly. 
keto yeah. friendly. <laughs> yeah. I'm on it. I'm losing it. <laughs> so, well, that's that. And the healthy side of things, we I've been yes. trying to get into that and uh, um, to do more healthier things. And um, and cauliflower, you can do so much with cauliflower mm -hmm. these days. They're making breads and crusts and things out of it. I mean, this is actually the first time I've had this, and it is real good. Yeah. It's got a lot of it, pop to it. It, it does. <laughs> it really got a lot of flavor. It's I know something. we're just talking about a side here, but it really. Yeah. It was really, really good. And like we were talking earlier, if you got a little bit of leftover, like your cream potatoes and mm -hmm. stuff, right. man, you take that, put your little oil in your skillet, oh, and no. have you some mashed cakes. That, yeah, there you go. Power them things out. You got a little, <laughs> yeah. like a hash brown style for breakfast with yeah. your eggs in the morning yeah. if you have a little bit oh, leftover. Oh, that would be good so. for breakfast. Oh, Making yeah. the patties. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that would be real good. Patty them up, fry them up, and throw them in there with some eggs. Now, some I bacon. might put a little bit of syrup on there, but... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. so we got this done, and we'll show you our plates here in a minute. We're just about done, ain't we? That's yeah. it. And yeah. we got some. We chopped up a little bit of green yeah. onion to garnish it with, and uh, we'll show you our plates here yeah. in just a minute. That's right. right. Okay, we are at the table and about ready to eat. They look good. Oh, yeah. And you should smell what it smells like. <laughs> they <laughs> smell <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> and these potatoes are the bomb. And we'll get back. We'll get back to you with everybody's thoughts on it and how well it was. And say our goodbyes. Okay, that concludes our video. And we finally got done eating dinner. So how would you how would you say everything turned out? Yeah, I thought it was great. <laughs> and that trout first time I had that, that was it was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. And I learned a lot today. Um, you grill a little different than I do, a lot more advanced than I do. Oh, no. so, <laughs> so I get to learn a little bit. So uh, Some of it's a little more primeval and you just got to kind of one eye that smoke is coming yeah. out next to you get that smoke. <laughs> that's when you know it's smoking real good. Yeah, you smoking can't see good. it. Right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to change some of the stuff that I do the way that I grill. So, uh, man, thank you so much for inviting yes, us into your home thank, and thank come you. eat dinner. And thank yes, you for... Um, all them good rubs and All the good seasonings. rubs and the, uh, uh, what's those things? <laughs> oh, cabbage. Cauliflower mash. Cauliflower mash. Or cauliflower mash. Cauliflower mash. <laughs> it's so good. Please try it. it yes. Good. Very, very healthy for you. Mm -hmm. And excellent. It's a great substitute to mashed potatoes if you're looking for something different. They were really good. Um, your spices, Cripple Creek Grilling. How do people find you? Uh, basically, go to Facebook, type in uh, Cripple Creek Grilling there for search. You'll find me there. And um, we'll put it at the bottom uh, of the page. We'll put that at the bottom or look we'll, me up, Michael yep. Fagan, on, on <clears throat> Facebook. We'll definitely go there. And we'll add that to our description down at the bottom on the links to it. But uh, is there anywhere in the world you want some shit? I uh, just out of the country right now. All right, so I got my shipping calls to where I know from, you know, like we've shipped as far as uh, Washington State, California, uh, Washington up, State. In, up into PA, mm -hmm. down to South Carolina. You know, we've shipped to several places so far, but uh, anything further than that one, I don't know what those shipping calls are. So <laughs> we'll have to kind of fill that one out as they come in. Absolutely. Everybody, please go see his page. Uh, he's got some great, great products, and it's a great addition to your grilling. Uh, uh, arsenal and I guarantee you'll love everything that you get from it. So we again thank you much for inviting thank you. us into your home. It's yeah. been great. Y'all take care and God bless. Yep.